maybe could you tell us why and then, or did you know that you could actually add photographs because you, you think they're missing? So this is one of the tools that we're working with. This one's actually deployed 100% on English Wikipedia uh, and has been running in a pilot since like November of last year. So the one thing I would add to this is that this is the first feature on Wikipedia that's actually engaged readers beyond simply the edit button. We've known from our previous research that clicking on the edit button and actually completing edit is a very tough thing for many users. They first have to go through and actually see the edit button, and when they see the edit button, they're confronted with all this wiki text. They have to navigate the wiki text and somehow end up completing the edit. So this is the first way, the, the first feature that's actually engaging the reader beyond just taking that very big step, and it's lowering the bar um, of contribution. And the way we like to characterize this is it takes a user from doing nothing to doing something. And once a user does something, the theory is that doing more becomes easier and easier. One of the things that we did with the article feedback tools, we ran a survey after a user completed the rating to figure out why people wanted to rate. And the interesting thing is a lot of these readers, they view this as a form of participation. So the number one response was, I'm editing because I want to help improve the page. Now we don't know whether this is because they don't know that they can edit or because they think that this is a way that they can actually help improve the page. But it's a very strong signal of intent here. The second most popular one was they actually articulated is, I want to contribute to Wikipedia, right? And this is a more direct statement of users saying, I want to contribute and this is how I'm going to do it, right? So a subset of these users, maybe, maybe not, will end up editing an article. Um, some of them will, but others simply see this as their mode of contribution, which I think is pretty significant. Do you want to talk about Wikilove? Yeah, let's move on to Wikilove. Wiki love. Oh yeah. Ryan Caldari, stand up. Everybody say hi. <laughs> wiki love. Wiki love is an awesome tool. I love it to death. I literally wiki love it. Um, we have, this has been a message that we've had for, uh, in several talks at this point, and it has to do, come back always to appreciation. Appreciation, gratitude, these are the most important things that we can do to users to keep them around. And we want to make sure that that's as easy as possible to do. There's a whole bunch of other little benefits that come along with Wikilove that I, you know, I'm very pleased about their little subtle, clever things. Like that heart up there means this is a user, this is a human being, and you need to think about them as a human being and start engendering empathy. Uh, it's, I, it's so simple to use, I don't even know, I mean, why people don't use it like every day. And I think you probably should. Um, I don't really have anything more to say about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's so easy. It's like, where do we go with that? So, uh, Jimmy talked about it, like yesterday a little bit that uh, Wikilove is sort of um, adding on to social behaviors that are already happening in Wikipedia. And I also wanted to point out like, Barn stars themselves and this kind of like thanking action are actually older than Wikipedia themselves itself in wiki culture. Like we didn't invent barn stars; it's been around a long time. Um, but in terms of figuring out what people are actually doing with Wikilove, we have at least what like three thousand or so um, instances of use of Wikilove so far on English Wikipedia. Um, and my research team in the community department is actually analyzing those messages right now. We're going through and hand coding basically all of them um, as a research group for whether they're praise or thanks or criticism, like what people are actually doing. And there's some instances of this on MediaWiki.org. And if you see interesting, weird use cases of it, whether particularly nice or someone's not using it as intended or other interesting behaviors, you should note that. Because um, we have seen some interesting stuff like the fact that um, because talk pages are notoriously difficult for newbies to understand, there are some people who are actually using the make your own feature in Wikilove as a like GUI for adding a new section on a talk page, um, which I think is pretty interesting and indicative of the kind of new messaging features we should be building in the future with tools such as liquid threads, et cetera. Um, but other than that, I think the, the two really interesting things is one, um, if you're un, 
happy or uninterested in what is in Wikilove right now, it's still totally customizable. Um, and I know Kaldari and I have talked a little bit about, and he's talked about with other people, the idea that Wikipedians could and should be making actually packs of different Wiki love uh, features like if you like different food or drink, different kittens, different barn stars, or different things entirely um, that they're interested in adding. So if you're really passionate about something that should be in Wiki love that you should be able to give to someone else, or something that shouldn't be there, make a configuration pack, um, and there's documentation for that on MediaWiki.org. And then the other thing is that um, I think that Wiki love is a really interesting expression or potential for expression of the uniqueness of all of our communities. Um, when we tested the feature as a gadget, not as a, an extension on Russian Wikipedia, they actually chose to uh, allow, I think they took out beer and added vodka and meat as gifts for, for, for things, which I, I think is beautiful. Um, so if you really love, there's actually already Stroop waffles in Wikilove, but if whatever your, your particular food or favorite animal of choice is that you feel should be given to people, you should go for it. I think the Germans were considering like trains or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, I think that's about it. We're going to take questions after the session. So we have some uh, data on how users are using Wikilove. And the, the first way to measure it is to ask the question, who's giving wiki love to whom? And to separate it by wiki generation. All right, so what this graph shows is the uh, age difference between sender and recipient of wiki love in number of days. So the middle bar here, which is about 28%, are people who are sending wiki love to people within the same generation. So this is somebody that joined in 2007, sending wiki love to somebody who joined in 2007. What's interesting though is the majority of the uses act is actually intergenerational, right? So 28% of the usage is for senders who are over one year older than the recipient and about 40% of the usage is vice versa. So we see a lot of kind of intergenerational communication with Wikilove, which is really interesting when we think about new editor retention and the role of mentoring uh, within our communities. The second way of looking at this is to look at this in terms of experience. So not taking a look at things in terms of wiki generation, but taking it in a look at it in terms of how experienced are these users and how are they using Wikilove to communicate to each other. So across this axis, we have the edit count of the sender in a couple buckets, and across the top axis is the recipient editor count along the same buckets. What we find is that the vast majority of the wiki love is exchanged between heavy users. And there's a variety of theories on why this is the case, um, but just know that for now, let's uh, keep it at the majority of the usage is uh, between heavy users. But if we take a look at slices, it, it starts becoming pretty interesting. So this is the slice of senders that have between one and nine cumulative ed edits. So these are new users. Who are they sending Wikilove to? It turns out that about half of the Wikiloves are sent to these paragons of virtue, right? So these are early editors sending Wikilove for some reason to people that are very, very experienced. And we have a couple quotes that shed some light on what it is they're saying. So this one is, thank you for welcoming me to Wikipedia. I might not log in too much, but still thank you. Plus, thank you for the cookies too. So I guess this user got a twinkle message with the cookies. Uh, hello, my name is, removed it. Please don't delete my stuff because when I grow up, I want to be a writer. Thank you <laughs> very much for your cooperation. And then the last one is, apart from congratulating you, perhaps you could tell me how to modify my signature and make it look bold or blue or stuff like that. I'm not sure how to do it. So this is a particularly interesting one. So this user is actually using Wikilove as a mode of communication to this experienced editor. They don't know how to do something. And instead of going to the talk page, they actually use Wikilove. And my thought behind that is it's probably 
easier for them to do it. Yeah, and I wanted to add on that, that I think for me, this one is particularly interesting because um, when we've looked qualitatively at how new editors actually ask for help overall, like Wikipedia, most Wikipedias have these extremely detailed um, and active help spaces, like the reference desk, things like that. Um, and they're extremely active. Like the reference test for the humanities and sciences on English Wikipedia are two of the longest page histories in the entire project. But it turns out that most newbies can't find or can't use those help spaces. Like the majority of questions we found are on their talk page or your talk pages, uh, someone else. So this is pretty interesting, I think. And you could also look at being this from the perspective of who's giving wiki love to these new users. So taking a look again at that new user one to nine cumulative edits, who's actually sending wiki love to them. And this bar to me is particularly interesting, right? So about a quarter of these wiki loves are coming from these really heavy users. And we have a few quotes as to what these guys are saying. So, hey, thanks for your contributions. Hope you enjoy the baklava. Thank you for asking questions and dealing with the conflict of interest rules in the best way possible. So again, this is interesting because this is actually, well, this is kind of nice to see you in Haifa. But if we could just talk about the conflict of interest one for a second. So this is another example where the experienced editor could have written on the user's talk page, but for some reason chose to use Wikilove as a way to send this message about, edu about educating the user on a really important Wikipedia policy. Yeah, and I want to say this is also a really important one because both through the editor survey and other research we've done, it's becoming extremely clear that this kind of teaching that, that's going on that like you and other experienced Wikipedians are able to do um, is one of the most important things to continue doing in a positive light. Like we're not asking people through Wikilove or other tools or other behaviors just to give up teaching new Wikipedians how they should be editing properly. Like, that's a ridiculous proposition. You should be doing more of that. Um, and so while this doesn't maybe seem like perfect, you know, praise, thanks, wiki love, silliness kind of thing that the feature seem to seems to suggest, this is a really positive thing going on for the encyclopedia. And the one comment I would have about the CU in Haifa is, I think Jimmy yesterday said that you know there's already social behavior going on in Wikipedia, and this is just another example of something that probably would have happened anyway that's being facilitated in a, a much easier fashion through software. This is mood bar. This is something that you guys will not see. Sorry to tell you that. Right now, we actually have it deployed on the English Wikipedia, and it's a way for us to start understanding why, what, what new users feel and to start grasping uh, a, a better understanding of what they're confused about and what makes them angry and, and even what makes them happy. Well, especially we like what makes them happy. This is actually intended to be a long, uh, there, it, it, if the data works out, there's interesting ways to, to start looking at it. Right now what happens is when a new user creates an account, uh, they will, when you, as soon as you click the edit button, not before, you get a little link up in the corner that says, I'd like to give feedback about editing, or something along those lines. And then they just select, editing Wikipedia made me confused, because, here's why. And then they submit it, and we get to look at that. And we get to look at the graph of how this works, and we get to actually chart by day how people actually feel about Wikipedia. Uh, and we get to learn what they're confused about sort it by keywords, start searching it, maybe see this running in a field, uh, you know, running in a, um, a stream so that you could so go, oh, okay, people are really confused about this new feature that we just rolled out, or they're very happy about this new feature, or they're very sad because, you know, somebody made it so that only auto-confirmed users can create articles. Um, we have data. Oh, yep. Third of users are confused. Uh, I, I, think, I think this kind of says it all. Some comments. Uh, I don't understand. Are we supposed to use bullets to differentiate opinions on the talk page or not? So these are all from the confused bucket. Is it very complicated and the guidelines are confusing? And probably could have expected this one. How can I create an article? Now, is Philippe here? 
<laughs> so Philippe is actually working with uh, Maggie, I believe, on responding to these, right? Yep. Which I think is a really interesting use of this feature because it does, it does two things in my mind. One is that the mood bar, if you think about going back to lowering the bar for participation, is getting the user to actually type something in their computer and submit it to Wikipedia, right? So it's again encouraging this uh, participation beyond simply the the edit button. And the second thing which Philippe's doing with Maggie is it's also an entry point into this conversation with these users, right? So if we find that there are a lot of users that ask this particular question, you can see this as potentially the beginnings of a conversation between an experienced user and this particular new user. So the last one is global profile. So Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> is there another? We got another slide after this. Okay, good. Uh, okay. So global profile. This is what everybody's afraid of. Um, <laughs> Facebookization. Uh, only it's not. It actually has nothing to do with Facebook. Facebook is actually all about. Uh, it's all about motivation. And I'm actually giving a talk about this stuff tomorrow. And I suggest you come to it. Um, it's about like how we're never going to be Facebook, and, and you know, just make sure you all feel good about that. What global profile is, is it's actually taking things about you and holding it in a structured manner and making it on every wiki everywhere. Uh, you will not have to create a user page anywhere. We're going to take data that you give us, and this is a very full profile. None of all this stuff is optional. It's there, don't, don't get me wrong, you don't have to give a real name, you don't have to do anything like that. Uh, but stuff that makes it useful for us. So for example, um, you see here that I am fluent in English and I have moderate Latin experience and that I'm interested in heavy metal and if you need me to translate an article to, uh, you know, heavy the heavy metal article into Spanish, I'm the wrong guy. Um, but we could say, once it's in structured format, we can start doing searches on it. And we can start doing things like cataloging your memberships to wiki projects. We can start doing things like um, uh, pointing out your, uh, uh, your associations within, the, uh, within the, the projects. Like say you do a lot of work at Translate Wiki. Now, now that, there's, there's, there you, there's what you got right there. Is you, you have this heavy metal article and you want to have it translated into Lithuanian. So you go search for a guy who's associated with Translate Wiki and has fluent Lithuanian and is interested in heavy metal. And then there you go. You found the guy. Of course, he probably would have already written, made the article. Um, the other interesting thing about this is this stuff over here. Uh, there's a very specific reason why we did this. We, doing all, all of our uh, user testing, every single bit of it, two things that people found completely impossible to do, and that was leave a message to somebody. The other thing that they found completely impossible to do, and it actually is almost entirely impossible for a new user to figure out how to do this, they were very interested in understanding what people actually did. What are his contributions? And how do you find that out? Well, it's buried all the way over here inside this little thing called the toolbox, and it's a small link, and it's automatically collapsed by default. So there's no way to do it. Well, let's just take these things that are about you, or about this object, in this case a person, and, and, and put them right there, where people expect it to be. You're also going to note that you, way up there, next to the heart, we have a little green uh, chat bubble. Well, this is actually something we're, all, we're also working on, which is a sort of a, it's w like Wikilove, but it's specifically designed just for messages and to educate people about talk pages. Now, there's another set of values to this. We know for sure, for show, sure, that the first place that people get eliminated from the pool is recent changes patrol or new page patrol, any patrol. And it also comes back to empathy. People will scan this and they will look for red links. They will say, if you don't have a user page, if you don't have a talk page, you're, I'm just I'm reverting you. I'm going to template you. That happens all the time. So one of the things we want to do is we want to make it easier for patrollers by making you human and creating empathy. So 
here you go. There's about four or five of these little things that we have. And it's just gonna be able to like make it so easy for you to like go like, oh, this was a great edit. And you just go just hover over the username and then, oh, you go up here like bam, give wiki love from there. You're gonna learn about me. You say like, oh, uh, he's got good faith because he actually has taken the time to fill this crap out. I mean, that's like a huge deal right there. Um, and you know, you get to understand motivations. You say like, well, why are you here? Well, I'm, I'm here because I'm here to fight for the users. This is, uh, this is important stuff. What's the next thing? Other That's it, other projects. Other projects, quick comments we mentioned. Next generation discussion system. Uh, I'm not gonna use its name. <laughs> uh, notifications, reversion tools, new editor startup kit, account creation improvement. Um, all these things are, uh, there's, a really, there's some really awesome stuff going on. I don't, do you wanna talk about it? Um, yeah, actually, I, I don't have a whole lot to add. We have a whole backlog of, of features that we're working on, and you know, the difficulty is not coming with the, up with the ideas. The difficulty is prioritizing them and getting the, uh, the help that we need. So um, I think that's all we have in terms of prepared comments. So maybe we can just take questions. You know, we're gonna, we'll kick this one. Yeah. Thank you. Um, quick introduction, I'm a French communist. And as I understand, this is all about uh, English Wikipedia for the moment, which, which is fine, no problem. But my question is, uh, uh, to what extent do you believe that this is applicable to, uh, or relevant to other languages or other projects? You mean, uh, uh, the, uh, what extent I believe this is relevant? No, all your projects, article, all your article projects. feedback tool. Well, article feedback tool is probably the most, I mean, it, it almost seems like that's something that was invented for commons. I mean, if you really think about it, because you yeah, just, quite. you change the, the criteria so it's not trustworthy, because I mean, really, image is trustworthy, come on. Uh, but they say like, you know, in focus or good composition, you know, we just rate, you can rate those things. And I think that would be very valuable on the commons, especially if you could then sort these things. He's like, I want to search for cats and only show me ones that have good composition. You know, that sort of a thing. The one thing I would add is I, I, I don't imagine these features are going to be, you, you can't take these features and just plop them into other projects, which is why we built some flexibility in. So the way I would look at these features is they're more kind of like, like concepts, right? There's a concept behind giving feedback on a piece of content, which might be applicable to Commons. Like Commons, I, I doubt would have the same four categories that, that we use on, on the English Wikipedia. And I would imagine that even in other language Wikipedias, there, there might be different categories. So I would actually expect that there would be a lot of customization once we, you know, take these features and and, and put them onto different projects. I have a question. Oh, too. And as far as other, pro I mean, for Wikilove in specific, if you want Wikilove and you want it like customized in whatever language you want, just ask for it, like, and it's yours. Like, uh, it's not just on English now; it's on Arabic and Hindi too, and we're working on Hebrew. It's a. I have a question about the moon bar. Um, like, uh, it sounds like Philippe and Maggie are answering when people have questions, but is it being in integrated with OTRS? So, like, when this gets deployed to, like, Arabic and, like, nobody knows Arabic, then, like, the OTRS people should be, like, and using volunteers to, like, like help the newbies. Um, I actually don't know that, I mean, integrating with OTRS, I mean, we haven't really thought about that. I mean, we have actually come up with uh, uh, some, and I wish I actually had a screen of it now, of, um, uh, a kind of like a dashboard, which would have a, a series of running comments. There you went. I was like, I looked away for a second and he disappeared. Um, uh, would have a series of, of running uh, responses and you could then actually go through them. Like anyone can go through them. I mean, the, part of the goal here is to actually, you know, surface problems that users are having to the community. Like, yeah, so eventually it will be public. Right. Um, we just didn't for the first for the first version of the feature. We didn't have time to actually roll out a dashboard. Um, but for the OTRs question, what I would actually recommend is that um, you take a look at the comments, uh, the actual data, and see if it might even be useful for OTS to respond. It may or may not. Um, and I would say that at this point, although Maggie and I are jumping into looking at some of that, we don't we don't know yet. Sorry. 
at this point, although Maggie and I are looking into doing some responses, we haven't yet judged efficacy or, or how helpful even doing those responses are. So before we invested a lot of development time into uh, integrating to OTRS or something else, we'd want to know if it actually worked, yeah. if it made any difference. Yeah, and, and that's actually um, it's such an important point because that's how we're taking a look at a lot of these features is that we just want to get something out and observe and measure because the additional the original thought behind mood bar like was to get quick feedback from our uh, our early editor community but when you put something in production you actually don't know whether it's going to be useful or not so before spending a lot of resources building out you know the Cadillac of features we just wanted to get something out there and see if it was useful at all and then evaluate yeah I think It's okay. You're you're absolutely right, Katie. Like um, yesterday, we talked a little bit about like the time between registration and first edits, and when people are showing up and doing things. And most people who ever edit after registering an account take their first actions within an hour of registering. Like the it's hours, minutes. Like that's important. Yeah. I think I think this is an interesting example, though, because I mean it's not showing up to experienced users, but. I, it's a good example of how the foundation is trying to work going forward, in, partially in, in terms of features. Instead of building like leviathans that take forever to get rolled out, and then when they show up, like they're not, they don't do what we designed them to do really, and they're not that useful to you or to the audience that we're shooting for. Like, just try and get things with a basic minimum feature set out the door and see, like, is everyone saying I'm sad because my mom died, or are they saying, you know, useful, constructive things out of this? And then really start to push on ways to like give the feedback to community members who really should be doing the work of responding to this stuff because they know what they're talking about, that kind of thing. Um, I was just gonna I was gonna amplify and augment what both you guys said exactly that right that um, when when we design at the Wikimedia Foundation when we're designing this kind of thing we're doing it on English only in the beginning just so that we can change it over time right I'm really interested in how Wikilove seems to be being used in ways that we wouldn't have initially predicted so it seems to me you know maybe we're gonna make a new tool for talking on people's talk pages that isn't Wikilove but it uses the same functionality as Wikilove um, and and supports you know, know desire paths right supports the way that people are actually trying to do things but I think it's really important that everybody understand that we're gonna do tons and tons and tons of experimentation as opposed to designing perfect things we're gonna experiment and see what works and just do more and more and more of that and run, then roll things out um, once they've sort of proved their worth and iterated a little bit I was just gonna ask a question I don't know if you guys have the answer to this and if you don't it's fine but I'm just curious if we put Wikilove out in Arabic and Hindi, was it Hindi? Um, how did they change it? How do the people in those communities use it differently, or, or what different kinds of um, ways have they customized it? Can we, can we pull up the Wikilove screen? Because yeah. I got a really, there's a really good one. <laughs> uh, well, the biggest change for for, for <laughs> most of these is is they don't use cheeseburgers as the icon. Uh, like, and in fact, that was like you know we're working on the Hebrew one. Like, yeah. The cheeseburger thing, no, we can't. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I believe it's strawberries now, like is the default image, it, Ryan? It's a cookie, it's a, we went back to the cookie. On Hebrew it's a cookie, okay. Um, they, they don't really change it except to remove things that are extremely or would be offensive in the culture. I haven't seen anybody add anything yet, but for all I know, the Arabic wiki has completely, you know, I, I tried even playing with it. I'm like, well, this is, I know it, how it works, but, you know, I don't know what they're saying. Um, so this is, this is actually, oh. Oh, so just one comment. This is where I actually ask for help from the community because I don't think any of us can read Arabic, and I think the 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 big the big piece of analysis that comes out of this is how in in, in regards to how people are using the tool is probably less the quant stuff and looking at the actual comments themselves. And you know we just don't have the capability at the foundation to to do that. So I, this I'd ask for you know people within the community to, to help us out with that. 
Oh, I just wanted to say really quick that um, configuring Wikilove is actually really easy, and any administrator can do it on the wiki. Um, there's there's a MediaWiki message page called MediaWiki colon Wikilove.js, and any administrator, um, anyone who can edit a MediaWiki namespace page, can go in and change it, um, and you know translate it or add new features. And there's a configuration guide on MediaWiki.org if anybody's interested. We got one more. Two more. Um, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, how would people think that this isn't like a like button or something and it's more complicated than just liking it or whatever because it might be confusing. I saw already in the Wikimania that some people thought that it was a like button or something of that sort. I, I honestly have no idea why, how people think this is a like button. I, I really don't. Um, the that comes back to uh, what we would call the the um, fear of Facebook, uh, and and that's really something that's like a much bigger talk than I can give you an answer for. Um, but I can talk to you about it tomorrow or any time off offline. I think I think we have to wrap up. There they need twenty. Okay, um, but the other point is that a like button is, is going to show up on on Facebook or other content all around the web, and you're never going to see a wiki love button on an article or to readers or something like that. It's not going to happen. Okay, I want to ask to ask about the user page, the new one. Is it going to be an optional, or oh, even because there in Israel uh, wiki, in Hebrew Wikipedia, uh, there are people that. Uh, uh, edit a more than a year and they choose to be, to be read. So I don't want to force them. The yes, they use it. Yes. You, they, so they so you're saying that some people want to actually have their user page read? Yes, read. They don't want to tell anything about themselves. Um, we, we, to, it, it's opt in right now. Um, but we, you know, this is actually, again, the, the design of that feature is in its very, very early phases. And we haven't even thought about how very deeply as to how this impacts like all the other wikis because we have research that we're still trying to collect. So okay. uh, I think we have to wrap up. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Deputy Mayor of Haifa, she's coming mm -hmm. about five minutes. Yes, she's coming about five minutes. So I definitely. So hello, anyone. We are going to present a new newbies incubator, a project that started in Russian Wikipedia. Uh, this is Semo, the creator. Uh, he will speak in Russian, and I will translate him in English. Uh, I'm sorry, my, my English not so wide and uh, uh, not so quick, uh, and I will help. My, my friends will help me. Hope we have no problem with that. Why did the incubator appear? I think the real Wikipedia doesn't need such a thing at all. Or it may be more integrated and uh, done in other way. We can compare two encyclopedia approaches. And uh, at least Russian Wikipedia, we see that from the founding principles of Jimmy Wales, we move more and more to Larry's principles. For example, better to and try becomes higher and higher. At least Russian Wikipedia. The, those who saw the morning lecture, they see that uh, the article from one phrase 
grows up to large launch and uh, even featured article. At least in Russian Wikipedia and as I heard in other Wikipedias as well, this article will be deleted immediately as a very short article without encycl encyclopedic content. So the requirement of uh, zero quality is uh, not feasible now. So there are initial requirements for article quality, like Larry suggested. So at the time of the creation, the article must be uh, elaborate enough. And to solve this problem, incubator was created. And our dream is to integrate incubator in uh, the Wikipedia more than it is done today. If I will have enough time, I uh, will elaborate it more. So, the main features of incubator. We try to take all the users' wishes into account, uh, in particular the fight uh, between uh, deletionists and inclusionists. And it's based on non-indexed namespace. So any article, even if it is one sentence, or even it says, I have a kitten and I love it, this article will, will survive for at least a month, anyway. With the exception of uh, very obvious vandalism, attacks, or something. Everything else we treat as a teaching process, uh, studying a wiki markup. And articles are deleted uh, not as vandalism, but as testing. So there is a minimum for one month for article to exist. And if author requests for more, we give him more. That is, for the first month we are inclusionists. For the next two months we help, but uh, note that we won't do this forever. And in four months we are deletionists. This is more than enough. The developed assistance system with elements of interactive study. Each newcomer receives uh, the help uh, that they need and nothing more. So he doesn't need to read all the rules. Just not rules, but step-by-step uh, -step, uh, pages. For example, to categorize a page, do the following steps. To do the formatting correctly, remove the space at the beginning of the line. Very simple and practical steps. Uh, 
obligatory friendly attitude uh, to all the participants. No, However, we are strict about what is the resulting article. Not uh, that the lies in the incubator, but what is uh, the final product. Uh -huh. So briefly, and we made a dummy English version of the incubator to show it. We will try to do a live demo. So the article is created, uh, goes through the health system, and it goes to main namespace. Of course, we have lots of trash. Then in a month, after the last edit, we consider it finished. He did everything that uh, he wanted and he could. And it goes for mini-review, where we uh, cluster them. Uh, totally bad articles uh, about a band we created yesterday, uh, about my parrot, or even Masha, I love you. They are, of course, deleted. If we can determine whether the article is notable, we move this to main namespace, uh, where it is uh, forwarded to AFD, where the notability is evaluated. And if we consider that the article is notable, but uh, it is not very good, we bring it for articles for improvement. And uh, very little amount of articles that uh, we didn't note previously goes to article namespace right away. This is briefly how, how it works. So now we need someone from the audience to act as newbie. Maybe it's you, will you? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, come here. <laughs> so the problem is that you can only see this display. So maybe this position will be more convenient. Okay. Um, so you need to create an article with, with a typical mistake that a newbie does. <laughs> it's oh, on the screen. Oh, oh, okay, so I'm going to try and look on the screen. Maybe you can put it here. I can't see anything. I don't even know where I am. So, uh, you type something in search box, something that uh, definitely doesn't exist. Russian or the English? English. You may use English. Someone give me something. What doesn't exist? You. <laughs> I do. I do exist. Let's do Leonard. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's how the internet works here. <laughs> Poland number two.
Ну что, говори. Скажи что-нибудь. Uh, okay, uh, we have only a few minutes. Maybe I will uh, try uh, with my pure English uh, to maybe say a few words. Oh. Uh, may, maybe uh, it uh, may be uh, maybe interesting that uh, not all people need uh, the incubator because uh, some uh, people uh, which uh, come which we uh, which we meet in we keep in Russian Wikipedia said oh incubator is very nice if not incubator we we was uh, need uh, leave uh, Wikipedia uh, other people said oh no incubator it is uh, do not need uh, it it is not interesting uh, we will uh, come to Wikipedia without any incubator and it, it may be uh, these two different groups uh, uh, and uh, for one of them uh, incubator is very neat and for other uh, of them incubator uh, do not need and I understand it work, okay. Did it work so well? now you tried to create the page okay. click it okay so you see the invitation That is, that is, Russian users see the same, but it is uh, more elaborate and extended. So now, we are going to the incubator. And we see the, its main page. This is a simplified version of Russian page created specially for this demo. Its aims, our icon, an egg, basic rules we suggest reading before. search boxes to check whether the article actually exists. A problem we encountered is that uh, newbies lost their articles in the incubator. They didn't remember where they put it. And if a signed up one uh, can find through his contributions, so the user that uh, didn't uh, register, he doesn't have this ability. No, finish. Uh, and so the final form is about creating an article. Can I ask, um, I know that Katie's trying to get us to wrap up because we're running out of time. Um, but I did want to ask a question before you wrap up. Do you have more that you want to do? I want to ask you a question. So what we're we going to do is to create an article and show how it works for from our point of view and from your. So here is the name of the article. Come on. What am I doing? What am I doing? Am I just typing in Wikilove? Enter. <laughs> so now you see the draft, and uh, oh, where did you go? You uh, have to write something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I wrote it. <laughs> so this is uh, the template of uh, the article, and you see some basic markup elements, and uh, you know, now you can type something. It works. <laughs> Be sure. The cursor moved. I see it. <laughs> Am I typing it? Yes, yes. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so now save the page. OK. It, it, it is a <laughs> typical new bias article. <laughs> a, a typical article by a newbie. <laughs> So here, how is it? How, how it looks? <laughs> and this is what uh, a newbie sees after he created his first article. 
The basic template that even it uh, get accidentally removed. A special bot uh, recovers it. On one hand, uh, it uh, warns uh, deletionists that uh, this article shouldn't be touched. And on the one, on other one, it is a cheat sheet for the newbie. So where and how he can get help? And we discovered that there are newbies who love uh, that uh, people come to them with, to help right away. And those who say, don't touch us until we finish. The second template is for this. And for example, uh, a newbie asks for help. And uh, it is written here how to do it. See you. What are we doing? So use the dot. Okay. But where are we? What am I trying to do? Edit the page. Okay. I can't see it. <laughs> Down. Maybe use mouse. Okay. But where is it? I can't see. It. I can't see the screen. Edit. And so we place a template. We place that? A template. With what? <laughs> ah, okay. Excuse me, this is so very interesting, but I think we're ready. Ah, okay. We are hurrying up, sure. Просто коротко скажем, и будем заканчивать. Давай назад, просто верни. Okay, uh, we will uh, finish uh, and only last moment. Uh, ways, ah, yes. <coughs> and uh, after that, uh, there is a request for, for help. Uh, and uh, uh, on the talk page, о, and категории можешь показать внизу просто. And immediately after that uh, we look this uh, uh, I I help. Uh, где, где категория? Ah, uh, I I I I help uh, with uh, in my work and uh, uh, ways. Ah, Vicky Love. And uh, and uh, help pe helping people uh, look it uh, here. It, it, it is uh, that was uh, at the start of our work in at the beginning of uh, 2010. And now we have uh, more more excellent system, and we look and uh, the data the, the data of uh, request for help and uh, who help uh, was help or not was help, and in what time. Uh, but uh, now we not uh, we not prepare for this. <laughs> Quick pre uh, presentation. Все, наверное, давай заканчивать. Время вышло. Еще вопросы? Ну, я не знаю, но вопрос, вопросы, наверное, давай после, потому что время вышло. So we are finished, and uh, as we are terribly run out of time, and uh, possibly we continue to exist there for two more days, and uh, you can go and ask questions if you are interested. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know. OK, hi, everyone. I'm going to do this really, really quick because I'm really hungry and thirsty and think so you are. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is, well, I think it's the most complica complicated talk I could do because it's what places for companies on Wikipedia and around it. So I thought to buy tomatoes at the market outside so you can throw it at me, but there was no tomato, sorry. So. Pretty quickly, in 2007, companies, uh, we companies thought Wikipedia would be a support for communication and went on Wikipedia, I'd edit the article and uh, just improve it in their ways and advertise for their content. And so Wikipedia and so those companies as damageable for the project, which was right, they were not improving the content. Four years later, things have changed. Companies now have, do understand what Wikipedia is and most of the biggest companies understand that Wikipedia is a free encyclopedia. And on the other side, Wikipedians, four years later, still think that companies are damageable and want to use it as a corporate communication thing. Um, so here we have a really weird thing where companies have evolved and trying to understand and to fit in Wikipedia, and Wikipedians still reluctant to have them edit, edit, edit Wikipedia and uh, improve it. Uh, so for the story, why I come here to, pay, to speak about companies and Wikipedia. I happen to be a board member of Wikimedia France for a few years, but this is not relevant here. And I'm a consultant in communication and marketing for digital companies. And it happened that um, I have one of my clients is... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> it happened that one of my oldest clients is a huge bank in France and I'm working with them for three, three years. And um, a year ago I had a business meeting with him and we just talked about usual stuff. And then he said, but um, you're really nice when we talked together for two years, you are a really nice guy. And, but I knew you were such a badass. I was just like, what? Um, yeah, I heard you on national radio two, year, two days ago talking with a journalist and he was saying just total nonsense about Wikipedia and free license and you just were kind of aggressive to him and said, yeah, he was saying bullshit. And he told me, yeah, okay, I didn't know you were a Wikipedian. So we start talking about Wikipedia and so on. And then he tells me that, you know, as a bank, we have a lot of history. We are existing for 100 years. And we, are ju we just hired an historian to write the company history just for the, co for the employees. So actually, the company was starting to do the work for Wikipedia without doing it, just writing the, uh, their histories. And this is content we could use but they never thought about having it on Wikipedia. Um, so from then, I started to think of what can companies bring to Wikipedia, not about communication, but about content, and how can they improve Wikipedia. So to know what place for company, well, uh, on Wikipedia, sorry, this is really poor English. Um, I made a little study, which uh, I'm going to publish, I think, on September, on my work time, obviously, uh, about the top 40 companies in France and the quality of the article on Wikipedia. And it was rating on 100 points, and the goal was to have the basic information about the companies, not having the best article ever, but having at least the basic information about history, what the company is, financial data, and so on. Well, and I rated it, and on average, right now, the score is 57, which is not that good. And the, wor the worst article is under 30 points, which means there is literally nothing in the article. So these are the top 40 companies in France, which are part of economic history and even history of France. And the article doesn't have any quality at all. There is no information. Um, OK, and so you can see which, what kind of company it could be. You can recognize some of, them, some of them, but anyway. So it's really big companies, not only for France, but even for the world. And if you look at the article in English, in any, or in German, any language, it's the same. Company article just sucks. I mean, we are really bad at that, because it's not interesting for us to improve that. However, companies have huge communication budgets and have huge resources, human resources. And are, this is PR for them, so they are kind of interested to improve it. And I started to talk with some main companies and tell them, what if we train you and we guide you through the Wikipedia editing system? Yeah, OK, why not? And so I have a couple of companies. It's not done yet. It's ongoing. Uh, that are, I'm training and guiding them. And it happens that uh, head of communication, really huge company, really huge. And he told me, yeah, I want to have that in the article. And I said, no. Come on, I'm the client, I'm paying, yeah, but I'm the expert of Wikipedia. I'm telling you, this is not going on Wikipedia. This is not what Wikipedia is for. And we had like 
huge arguments and explain to him. So I show him an example of a company who did that. And I told him, you see, Wikipedia is not all that. Wikipedia is for telling to people, to wider people, what you are. Not what you want to say about you, but what you are. And it's sinking in. And it's sinking in. And now we're having discussion about something else I'm just talking about later, just after that. So first point is companies can be a really helpful resources for improving themselves. And they are really okay to abide by our rules and to fit in the process and even to, to do it like openly and say, hey, we are the company, we are editing it, and if you have any comments, just do it. And if you see the, uh, that a reference is lacking, just tell us. We have resources to find the, the, um, the references. Um, yeah, and so that's the next part. Uh, of those companies, on average, they have a budget of uh, half a billion euro per year in research and development. It means they, have, they are paying lots of people to make research and to develop new things and to have a lot of expertise on very specific fields. And on this half a billion dollars per year per company, none goes to Wikipedia. Not a single euro is used to improve Wikipedia. This means like companies like Orange, Danone, have thousands of researchers, thousands of people making research and documenting things. And they are not, nothing is going to Wikipedia. And even you don't know they are actually doing research things. So we st I started with some companies to talk about them. What about if you spent like 1% of your budget, annual budget in research and development, training your researchers and Get, stepping in Wikipedia and helping improving the article. Not even editing, but just helping, giving resources, telling to Wikipedia, hey, you're writing an article about, I don't know, asthma or some really rare disease. Hey, I'm an expert in that. So if you need resources, if you need um, references, I can provide it to you. I can tell you where to go to look. And this is trying, to, this is starting to sink into because, well, communication company has changed and they're trying to be more human. But they are kind of okay to give resources to help, just to help. And so we can use company to, to have resources, to use them to get resources, information and, and references. And, um, and company wants to interact with us because this is the next step. Okay, so this is all what companies can do on Wikipedia. They can improve their articles and they can provide resources, expertise and so on. It happened that I'm working with Yamaha, which uh, is, uh, you know, the brand for motorcycle. And um, it was one year ago, well, early last year, and meet, business meeting as usual. And then the, um, the CEO said, you know, there's something funny. I'm 60, 65, you're 26, I'm old, you're young. And for my whole life, I was keep on thinking what's going, what's going to happen tomorrow. But now I'm retiring. And I just looked back and said, I'm not leaving anything. I mean, I've, he brought Yamaha in France 50 years ago, and he left nothing. And he said, I want to, people to know what Yamaha was for the last 50 years in France. And I told him, yeah, okay, let's do a wiki. And he said, yes. In fact, they had like tons of archives of photo, videos, contents, uh, dusting, little dusting in a, in a cave. And I told him, digitize it, make a wiki. And so it happened. We, it's not public yet. It's going to be like in few days, and uh, just a sec. So this is not MediaWiki for different reasons, but actually Yamaha Motor France, which is the French corporation in France for Yamaha, it has done a wiki. They are digitized over 5,000 photos of Yamaha, and everything is on the wiki. Everyone can edit. Uh, the workflow for editing is slightly different because there are companies that need reassurance, but everyone can edit. And um, there is the little funny thing. We had a lot of discussion about the free license they could use. So at the beginning, they were, no, we don't want free license. And we start to talk, to talk, to talk. And in the end, we picked, OK, give me a sec. Yeah, there is a Facebook in that. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but it's uh, freer than Wikipedia. It's in the CC by SA. So they just want people to get the content to do whatever they want with that and to use it. And actually, this is great. I mean, all the content wouldn't be able to go to Wikipedia. It's not admissible. I mean, there is like this article is about a pilot in Italy, uh, an Italian parliament of late 60s. So perhaps it's not admissible. Perhaps it is. I don't know. But they provide all of the content in the article. All is uh, what I already did. Uh, there are full pictures. There are. Okay, this is everything, he, every race he ran in all his life, there is 
some picture, there is some content, and this is provided by Yamaha. And they are starting with it's going to be like 300,000, uh, 300 um, articles, but then they want the community to step in and improve and provide with pictures and say for people who, have, who are riding uh, Yamaha for like 20 years and a lot of pictures for old races to just upload it on the wiki under a free license. This means that companies can also not only improve Wikipedia, but just improve open knowledge as well and give more and more resources we can use in the end. Because Yamaha is not able to have like a full project editing Wikipedia and it's not interesting for them. But that is a lot of value for them. Their brand exposition and value of the issue uh, and they are, sorry, um, there's value of the brand history, but they couldn't do that on, Wiki, on Wikipedia. But we can use that. So I try to be really, really quick. Uh, I'm ending it right now. Um, if you have any questions, well, you can ask me anytime. Um, I know this is a sensible uh, topic, but I think this is part of the answer we have about improving quality and having new users is through companies too. We are doing tremendous work with GLAMS, but companies are huge resources too, and perhaps we should try to step in and have them edit Wikipedia. Thank you. Are you hungry? I know I am. Um, which is a pity because this is one of the most interesting projects um, ever and it has a great title, don't you think? I just love that title. Um, and I don't know if you know what a fellow is. Uh, we certainly don't have a word for it in, in Swedish. Uh, it's a, sort of a stipend. So what I did was to work on this project for half a year. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. And I'm, I'll try to be quick so that we can go to lunch very soon. So th this is the background. And you, this is actually a bit further than the graph that Howie and Brandon told you about. And this is, um, this is uh, 2007, the, the peak there. And the, then it goes beyond today. So this is where we end up in 2015 if we don't do anything. Um, so this is one of the projects um, that is better than doing nothing. <laughs> And let's see how good we are at actually doing something. So um, to actually get people to, to uh, edit Wikipedia, we need to welcome them. We need to uh, open our arms and say, once they create an account, uh, we want them to feel welcome. And that's not how it is. And I'm not going to bother you with how the original uh, account creation process looked like, because because it's not safe for children. Um, so uh, this is a representation. <laughs> OK, um, so uh, it was fairly easy removing some of the warning signs on, on, on the account creation process uh, and make it a, a little less uh, appealing, uh, less not appealing. Uh, but it was harder to find out what we wanted to have instead. So what we just started with was doing a survey. So that's step one. Uh, uh, so this is the questions we, uh, this is uh, the one question survey we have on, had on English Wikipedia. And the result was, so hopefully to no one's uh, surprise, I want, oh sorry, I wanted to be a part of Wikipedia. That, that was what everybody answered. And so we did a second survey asking, OK, what do you mean by that? And uh, primarily, they wanted to be able to follow articles, which is good because we had the watch list, right? Um, and we have the contributions list. Um, so we also asked them to, to write something in a free text uh, box. And th this is some of the things they wrote. I particularly love this, the, the fourth one. Um, but there were others that weren't equally clear on what they meant. I hope you can read the, that. I thought I would be able to read a lot more articles, like some sort of pres uh, 
uh, you su subscribe to Wikipedia or something like that. But my favorite is this one. <laughs> and, and this is important for one, uh, one, fa uh, for, for one very particular reason, and it's that everybody who creates accounts on Wikipedia aren't going to ever write anything. We need to keep those in mind. We can't convert everybody. Uh, so the next step was to create a, a, a set of low quality tests and we did this by, um, by just uh, editing the uh, account creation process. Um, so I said I wasn't going to show you and this is, this is the least objectionable one of the pages. Um, this is not, um, I, I'm not, um, um, you have this abbre abbreviation TLDR too long, didn't read, um, and we, th we said, well, we can do better, and it turned out that we couldn't. And they said, that's Sage Ross, if you know him. Um, so what, what we wanted was to, to test certain things, and it turned out that we ha actually had some results from that. The first one was that we could move the needle a little bit upwards from 27, 29% who make even one edit to 35. But it turned out that Wikipedians turned angry when we did things that did, they didn't like. And it was fortunate that I was a fellow of the Wikimedia Foundation because if I were just an admin experimenting with this, they would have blocked me. And I think Wikimedia Foundation should hire more fellows to do risky stuff. <laughs> so uh, then we started up with high quality tests. And before I get into that, I, I need to explain a little bit about how we did. We didn't just edit the pages like we did. We had three different versions of each page in the process. Uh, so that means that some of the people uh, got to login page A, some people got into login page B, and some people got into login page C, and so on. And we tracked these people uh, to see how many edits they made. That was the measure of our success. If we could get more people to make one edit, or even five edits, that would have been the measure of success. And this is an extension, uh, the customer uses sign up. And uh, I think we could use that extension to more things. As, uh, for instance, if you could do outreach work, you could uh, link um, specifically to one uh, custom-made user sign-up, and you can track how many people come from that outreach event and start editing Wikipedia, so you know how successful you were at that outreach project. But this is one of the ver versions. Um, it's a user page creator. Uh, I'm not so certain if you can read the text, but what it is is over here is a text box where we ask people to write about themselves. The, uh, and then when they click create my user page for me now, uh, that text is automatically filled in to that page and all you have to do is, is click save. And once you do that, uh, once you get to that page, it looks like this. Uh, you have a help bar at the top of the page, and you can you can. Um, there's all sorts of help there. It's getting started is another of the tabs up uh, at the top, and there's also help and my my user page and so on. So, and we also encourage people to upload photos of themselves because we wanted to make people. Uh, for the other users to be able to see that this was actually a person, which would hopefully make them less inclined to revert their edits. So uh, that was one of the versions we tested. The other one was a was um, based on a um, on a website called Spark.com, 
uh, where we asked people what their interest was, and then we coupled that with the next step, which was what's your skill, what you, what's your good at, or what do you what do you want to do on Wikipedia, and and then we directed towards uh, them towards uh, specific tasks that were. Uh, um, dependent on what they chose here. So if they if they clicked on history and copy editing, then we had a list of articles in the field of history, which uh, had to do uh, had to be copy edited, for instance. And then we came to the results of that, which was the interesting part, because we can actually get a much higher rate of people if we just change to the user page creator model on English Wikipedia. We can have nine people more a day. On an average day, there are my nine people more who create five edits, uh, who make five edits or more. And I think that's enough. Uh, in, in one year, that's over 3,000 people just by changing a little bit of code. So here are my recommendations. Uh, we implement this model and we continue to improve it. Uh, because I think we can get up to at least 15 people a day or even more. The second one is we've created a, a category for everybody who, who's in this model uh, and they go to category new Wikipedians and then the month, uh, the year and the month of uh, when they created their uh, account. So it's very easy to find those uh, users and greet them and, and welcome them into the different wiki projects. And then the third recommendation is that I want you to test this on your wiki as well. And I'll, I'll be here to help you and the tech people are going to be uh, here to help you as well. So just come and, and ask us question and, and we'll respond to it. So uh, if you all take out your mobile cameras now and you can scan this uh, and it will lead to the full report on uh, this project. Yeah, Pete. I'm, I'm curious, you said uh, to test it on different language versions. Is it also available in MediaWiki generally, like beyond the... Yes, and th this is an extension that you can have on any MediaWiki set up anywhere. Any more questions? Everybody's hungry, I guess. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Woo!